Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the next iteration of our, of our maps, which uh, in this app-centric world we're calling version 3.0. I don't know what the point O stands for, but anyway, it's there. Um, so first we're starting with uh, different alternative measures of physical hazards. So we have some new data on water anomalies, on, on too much water, abundance, or too little water, or scarcity of water. Uh, we are using updated subnational conflict data. So our partners at OCLED, armed conflict, uh, Event, armed conflict uh, location, oh, and data location and events data set are now uh, they're I think one week to ten days behind so there it's always um, almost real time so we're including those uh, we're also uh, working very hard to improve our subnational database of household resilience household and community resilience and we're doing that on a couple of different fronts one we're trying to standardize our subnational units across indicators so rather than having just rasters that we have to overlay and use GIS to an analyze we can use we can an, we can analyze more with more statistical analysis so we'll have a common unit of analysis a common geographic unit of analysis um, uh, and this is done using a combination of shape files from, from uh, global administrative data, database, global administrative unit layers, and map libraries. So combining those, which using the ones we think are most accurate. Uh, we also have uh, more and improved subnational indicators that we've extracted from uh, subnational household surveys, predominantly USAID sponsored demographic and health surveys. Uh, so now instead of just a couple of indicators, that are at the subnational level in that basket, we have many more. And in fact, most of them now, education, literacy rates, infant mortality, and malnutrition are all at the subnational level. Uh, we're also trying to switch from using just quintiles, which is just one, two, three, four, and five, to a, a much more fine-grained uh, uh, percent ranks. So we have uh, uh, so down to, you know, um, uh, 100 uh, uh, degrees of difference rather than just five. Uh, this allows for much more detailed analysis and much, a much better analysis on the impacts of what happens when you, when you play with one policy, when you try to improve uh, health indicators in one country, what does that do to the overall vulnerability? Uh, so this is just one indication of the infant mortality rates. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that in, in the first iteration there were much, uh, uh, much less uh, granularity at the national level. Many of those infant mortality rates are just using national level indicators. Now when we're moving to the more subnational units, uh, we now, instead of you know, 55, 54, 55 countries, we have eight, uh, approximately 800 different uh, subnational units. So we get a much more fine, finer grained picture on that. Uh, we don't yet have these maps ready to show. So um, now I'm going to move to uh, jump ahead a little bit, move away from the vulnerability project into what we're calling this year's project on urban resilience and climate change challenges in Africa. So this is every year, this is the fourth year of the project and every year we've conducted what we call a policy research project at the LBJ school. And this is where we have a team of master students that are looking into a particular problem. So Jennifer's gonna talk in a minute about what she did last year. But for this coming year, we're working on this project led by Professor Bob Wilson and, and myself as the deputy director. Uh, and in this, we're, we're thinking about cities in Africa as um, um, uh, places that perhaps need, need a more look at the institutional capacity of cities to deal with, with climate change. Uh, Africa is the least urbanized co co continent, but that is rapidly changing as, as probably most people in this room are, don't already know. Uh, and Africa cities already face a wide variety of challenges, uh, among them high levels of poverty, strained education systems, uh, overwhelmed public health systems, uh, lack of adequate housing, uh, public infrastructure that just can't keep pace with growth. Uh, so adding to all of these problems is, is climate change. And this is something that, that policymakers at the city level will need to take, take, take account of when they're dealing with these other challenges. Uh, the World Bank has estimated that up to 80% of the expected 80 to 100 billion dollars for adaptation will be in, in, in urban areas. Um, and yet, I don't think that 80% of the attention is going to urban areas. Uh, some cities are, are, are trying to deal with this uh, in, in, in spite of a lack of national level attention or uh, inter international consensus to deal with, with the problems that are that cities will face. 
uh, uh, some cities are already dealing with it. In Africa, uh, Durban is probably a shining example of that. Many, however, are, are not, and uh, for a variety of reasons that, that we're going to try to get to over the next year. Um, uh, competing priorities. I mean, if you can't deal with the problems of today, why should you worry about climate change in the future? Is it a lack of policies? Is it a lack of, of, of developed policies? Or is it a lack of a failure to implement those policies? Is it a failure, a lack of financial resources or a lack of human capacity? Um, it, and I mean, I can go continue the list. Political will, or is it, uh, you know, is, are politicians accountable to, to, their, to their populations? Uh, the looking at uh, horizontal cooperation amongst municipalities or vertical cooperation between the municipality and the national level, um, what, what's happening there? So these are some of the things that we're trying to get to with these questions. What are the challenges? What are the policies or, or plans that have been developed to, to face those challenges? And what are the, the obstacles to implementing those, those policies? Um, I, I'd be happy to talk with anybody about these questions or, or give you a, a copy of the perspective. We're really looking for, for input on these. We think that our contributions can be the institutional focus. We're not engineers. We're at a school of public policy. Uh, um, but from an academic perspective, we can look at these free from political constraints that the UN or the World Bank might have. Um, and we, we're hoping to look at this across cities. Um, uh, it's a, 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 cross, a comparative analysis. Um, so that we can compare if one city is doing something well versus another city that may not be doing it well. Uh, across climate hazards, why does one climate get better responses than another climate in the same city? So these are our cities. We've chosen them for variation in the climate hazards, the geographic region, economic development, and the colonial legacy. Um, so of the 18, of the nine master students will be going, 18 master students will be going to nine of these cities, and then uh, I'm working on one of these case studies. So anyone who has any expertise in these cities, please see me offline. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to hand this over to Jennifer. Mm -hmm.